Patches is the NPC in Elden Ring that we all love to hate. Even so, he has an extensive questline involving Tanith, the Volcano Manor, a few gestures, and several unique rewards, all of which will be covered in this guide. As usual, useful timestamps can be found in the video description. To start Patch's quest, head to Markwater Cave in Northern Limgrave. Loot the chest in the boss room and Patches will jump out to attack. Use a relatively weak weapon to whittle Patches down to half health or less, at which point he'll surrender. Unfortunately, if you accidentally defeat Patches here, nothing will bring him back from the dead, and his quest will be incompletable, at least as far as I know. Upon accepting Patches' surrender, you'll get the Grovel for Mercy gesture. Afterwards, speak with Patches and go through all of his dialogue. If you want a second gesture, then at this point you can use a weak weapon to antagonize Patches by hitting him three or more times. He'll begin attacking you, and once your health drops below a certain threshold, roughly 30%, Patches will offer forgiveness if you grovel for it. At this point, you should get the extreme repentance gesture, and even though Patches tells you to grovel, you actually need to use that repentance gesture in order to be forgiven. The grovel for mercy gesture won't work. And if you end up dying, that should also return Patches to a friendly demeanor. After going through all his dialogue, you can reload the game and Patches will have a shop with several useful items for sale, including Margit's Shackle and the Missionary's Cookbook 2, which will teach you how to craft gold-pickled foulfoots, grace mimics, and script stones. There will also be a new chest in Patch's Hovel, which will act as a transportation trap when opened, transporting you to a remote location near the Mistwood Ruins. Make your way to any site of grace to regain the ability to fast travel, then head back to Murkwater Cave. Patches will react to your unexpected return, and you'll get the Calm Down gesture for your troubles. While meeting Patches at Murkwater Cave and getting him to surrender is a necessary step for his quest, attacking Patches a second time and opening the chest are both totally optional and need only be done if you want those two gestures. Meeting Patches at his next two locations is also optional and involves a little more than additional interactions with him. If you want, you can just skip those steps and speak with Tanith at Volcano Manor to progress Patches' questline. That being said, I highly suggest you find Raya to the east of Scenic Isle in Lyurnia before going to Volcano Manor. She's located in a pavilion near the Bird's Eye Telescope, and you'll need to speak with her there in order to start Blackguard Big Bogart's quest. The reason why this matters is because when you speak with Tanith at Volcano Manor, it will also cause Raya to move from her location near Scenic Isle, which will make it impossible to start Blackguard Bogart's questline. If you're interested, you can find links to both Raya's and Blackguard Bogart's quests near the bottom of this video's description. But now let's get back to Patch's quest. The Scenic Isle in Lyurnia is the first potential spot to find Patches after he leaves Markwater Cave. If you speak with him there, he'll tell you about Raya along with some mischievous advice that involves being captured by a specific virgin maiden in Rhea Lucaria Academy. Again, this interaction is totally optional and may have been skipped if you've already made your way to Altus Plateau. The next place you'll find Patches is in Mount Gelmir. To get there, we'll first need to reach Altus Plateau, and to do that, we'll make use of the Grand Lift of Dectus. You'll need to get both halves of the Dectus Medallion, one can be found at Fort Height in Southeast Limgrave, and the other half can be found at Fort Faroth in Caled. Once you have the complete medallion, take it to the Grand Lift of Dectus in Northeastern Lyurnia. You can get to it by traveling up along the west side of Lyurnia Lake. After reaching the main Caria Manor Gate site of Grace, head east and use a stone spire bridge to cross over to the east side, then make your way north to the lift. From the Grand Lift, first make your way east to the Altus Highway Junction site of Grace, then travel north to the forest spanning Great Bridge. There you'll find a portal that transports you to the opposite side of the broken bridge. Head west until you cross over the Bridge of Iniquity. Along the cliffside that you'll see to the southwest, there is an easy-to-miss rudimentary ladder that you can climb to reach the first campsite of Mount Gelmir. This site of grace is near the next potential spot to find Patches after Scenic Isle. Head northwest past the Siege Tower and either defeat or sidestep the Mad Pumpkin Head enemy. Behind it, you should find a gold message from an anonymous Patches informing you that rainbow stones lead to riches. Sure enough, a path of rainbow stones can be found trailing away towards the southwest. Patches will be located crouched by some rocky formations a short distance off of the second or third rainbow stone, though I'm not sure if speaking to him matters at this point. However, if you follow the rainbow stones to the end of their path, 
you'll get a special cutscene in which Patches boots you off the cliffside on a one-way trip down to Seethwater River. Make your way over to Seethwater Terminus and activate that Site of Grace, then return to the first campsite of Mount Gelmir. While I haven't been able to confirm it myself, I've seen one player claim that returning to Patches near the Rainbow Stones after having been kicked off the cliffside by him will unlock the Calm Down gesture if you missed it earlier on. It might be worth giving it a try, but only if you've already missed the gesture at Murkwater Cave, and I'd be curious to know if this works. Again, this whole interaction is optional and may have been skipped if you've already spoken with Tanith at Volcano Manor, which is where we're headed next. From the first campsite of Mount Gelmir, make your way across the Natural Stone Bridge to the northwest, then make your way up a few more ladders and across a couple more bridges to eventually arrive at Volcano Manor. Head inside, speak with Tanith, and agree to serve Volcano Manor. Rest assured, joining the manor will not have negative consequences elsewhere in the game. As I mentioned earlier, speaking with Tanith will also make it impossible to start Blackguard Bogart's questline if you haven't already done so. After speaking with Tanith, discover and rest at the Site of Grace nearby and patches should show up in the entrance hall to the manor. Use the drawing room key from Tanith to open the door to the manor banquet room down the hall's second door on your left. Inside, you'll find some NPCs with interesting things to say, along with a letter on the dining table that contains the first target request from Volcano Manor, Old Knight Istvan. Head to the marked location north of Warmaster's Shack in Limgrave, and use the red summoning sign there to invade and defeat Istvan, acquiring his scaled armor set in the process. Afterwards, return to Tanith to report your success, and she'll give you the Magma Shot Sorcery as a reward. Reload the game, and at this point you should be able to speak with Patches about a request of his own. He'll give you a letter that designates a new target for elimination, the Great Horned Tragoth. To reach Tragoth, travel north through the Lake of Lyernia up to the Ravine Veiled Village Site of Grace. You'll then need to make your way through the Ruin Strewn Precipice Dungeon until reaching the Ruin Strewn Precipice Overlook Site of Grace. Next to the Overlook, there's a Magma Worm boss battle that will need to be fought and won in order to progress. Once the worm is defeated, rest at the new Site of Grace and the summoning sign for Great Horned Tragoth should appear on the ground nearby. Use the red summoning sign to invade and defeat Tragoth, acquiring the Bull Goat armor set in the process. Return to Volcano Manor and report back to Patches about your success. Then reload the game and speak with him again to get a second reward, the Magma Candlestick Whip. To get Patches to move to his next location, we'll need to defeat Riker Lord of Blasphemy. Doing so will close off access to the remaining quests in Volcano Manor, and I can't say with 100% confidence that the remaining two Manor target requests are optional, and in any case, I think they're worth doing, so I will include them in this guide. Return to the banquet room table and pick up the second target request for the manor, which I believe is pronounced Riley the Idol. You can reach him by heading through the ravine north of the Grand Lift of Dectus. Find his red summoning sign a short distance south from the Shaded Castle. Once again, use the summoning sign to invade and defeat Riley, acquiring the Crepus's Vile Talisman in the process. Report back to Tanith about your success and she'll give you the Serpent Bone Blade as a reward. She'll also bring you in on the secret of Volcano Manor. As a quick warning, if you want to obtain the Tonic of Forgetfulness, which is part of Raya's questline, then you'll need to do it before eliminating the third target of Volcano Manor, which is received in the red letter. And again, if you're interested in doing that, you can find a link to my full Raya questline guide near the bottom of this video's description. Whether you've gotten the Tonic of Forgetfulness or just don't care about it, at this point you can pick up the red letter from the Banquet Hall containing the third and final Volcano Manor target, Juno Hoslo, the older brother of Dialos. Reaching this target will require gaining access to the mountaintops of the Giants. In order to access the mountaintops, you'll first need to acquire two of the Great Runes, I recommend getting the ones from Godric and Renala, then make your way through Landell Royal Capital and defeat Morgoth the Omen King at the Elden Throne. After doing all of that, Melina will give you the Rolled Medallion, which you can use to take the Grand Lift of Rolled up to the mountaintops.
From the Lift of Rold, make your way north until you reach the ancient Snow Valley Ruins site of Grace. From there, head northwest to the marked location, which is just a short distance east from the Shack of the Lofty. At this point, you probably know what to do. Find the Red Summoning Sign, Invade, Eliminate, and Reap the Rewards. Also, after invading Juno, if you wait a moment, he'll use the Hoslo's Oath gesture, which will unlock it for you. This time around, you'll acquire the Hoslo's Petal Whip, along with the Hoslo's Armor Set. Report back to Tanith about your success, and you'll receive the Taker's Cameo Talisman as a reward. At this point, Tanith will offer to transport you directly to the Lord of Volcano Manor, aka the God Devouring Serpent, aka Rikard. Before doing so, I also suggest you eliminate Bernal's requested targets, which will net you the Galmir's Fury Sorcery. Afterwards, you can accept Tanith's offer and be transported to the Rikard boss room. I don't often give advice on how to defeat bosses, but for this boss, there is a special weapon to your left as you enter the arena, the Serpent Hunter, which you'll want to grab and equip. For this fight and this fight only, the Serpent Hunter is an absolute beast. You can even upgrade it at a smith to make it stronger, but that's hardly necessary if you ask me. Defeating this boss will reward you with the Remembrance of the Blasphemous, which can be exchanged at Roundtable Hold for either Rikert's Rancor or the Blasphemous Blade. Return to the main Volcano Manor hub area and speak through some final dialogue with Tanith, Bernal, and Patches. Then reload the game and make sure that all of them have left the manor proper. Patches will move to what is currently his final known location in the Shaded Castle. You can reach it by traveling just a short distance north from where you invaded Riley the Idol. Find the break in the castle wall to enter, then make your way to the boss room. I'm not sure if Patches will spawn outside the boss room before defeating the boss inside, Elamer of the Briar. In any case, you'll definitely want to defeat that boss as he drops the Mirai Executioner Sword, which is one of the legendary armaments. You should be able to find Patches slumped down near one of the statues in the bridgeway leading to the boss room. Speak through all of his dialogue and he'll give you the Dancer's Castanet's key item. Speak with Patches one more time and he'll become unresponsive. If you do any amount of damage to Patches here, he will die, leaving behind his item set and a bell bearing. However, and here's where it gets interesting, if you reload the game, Patches will have disappeared. But he won't leave behind any items. This basically confirms that our untethered friend is alive and well, and I predict we'll see some additional interactions with him added to the game in future updates or DLC. As for the Dancer's Castanets, you can actually return to the Rikard boss room to find Tanith engaging in some questionable activities. 
Interact with her and you'll have the option to give the dancers castanets. If you choose to do so, they'll be taken out of your inventory but will have no seeming effect on Tanith, at least for now. Again, I think we'll see this interaction expanded in future updates. Also, if you want, you can attack Tanith here and get her item set. This will also cause you to be invaded by a Crucible Knight that drops one of the Crucible incantations. Personally, I think attacking Tanith and or Patches in order to get their item sets is only really worth it if you're planning on going to New Game Plus in the near future. Otherwise, it might be more worth it to just wait and see what From Software has in store for each of their storylines. And that's about it for Patches' questline, at least for now. If you're still having trouble with this quest, you can reach out in the comment section where I'll do my best to help. I also recommend checking the comment I have pinned as I'll be updating it with information about specific problems people are having and potential solutions. I'm working on guides for all the major quests in Elden Ring. If you want to find those, you can head over to my channel, and if you're new, consider subscribing. You're helping me feed my cat, her name's Marshmallow. The Marshmallow merch store is now live over on the channel, and it features professional Elden Ring-inspired artwork of your favorite fluffball. Have a great day. If you're here today, have a great Sunday and a great week. And as always, thanks for watching.